Okay, we're back. And I gave you a bit of a challenge. I know it's more of a challenge for some people than it should be because uh, their Git isn't installed properly on their systems. Uh, there's some issues with that. So worst case scenario, what do you do? You can always go to the websites. That's why I use Bower for my dependency manager. But worst case, if I wanted to get all my bootstrap, I can go to getbootstrap.com, right? That's why you have to do the long way, getbootstrap.com. Um, go to download bootstrap and download bootstrap and put it inside your lib folder, right? So if I download Bootstrap, uh, what do I get? Um, I can choose this one with uh, not the source code, but this one here. And I'm going to get a Bootstrap.3.36. Uh, this one is the like, latest version. I've already downloaded Bootstrap 3.35. It says dist, if you notice, right? Uh, just to show you what that looks like. So let's go into my downloads. Hopefully they're not dirty downloads today, right? Sometimes I have other stuff in there. Today I don't. Um, so notice how it has CSS and JavaScript. If you were to take this and put it into a dist folder, so if I was to change this, uh, this bootstrap folder to a dist folder, like D-I-S-T, right, as an example, and that's okay. Um, you could put all the, um, your bootstrap stuff inside there, this CSS fonts and JavaScript, and then throw this into your folder, into your public lib folder. So even if, if, if Bower won't allow it, you can still do it, okay? Same thing with uh, jQuery. So, of course, for jQuery, you'd have to go to jQuery.com, right, and grab your stuff locally there. Download jQuery. You want to get the latest one, 2.1.4. And, again, you download it and put those files, a reference to your jQuery files, inside your public lib folder, just manually. You do it that way. For Angular, it's the same thing. If you go to angularjs.org and you want to download Angular, you can click on Download, right, which will take you to what you want to download. You want to definitely not do this one, not 1.5. You want to go with 1.4x, the stable one. Um, notice how it says Bower install Angular 1.48. You can all you can um, you can just download. If you click download, it'll it'll just download the modules you want inside your uh, minified or uncompressed zip, depending on what you want. All right. Sorry. NPM is slightly different. I wouldn't recommend using NPM because of the way you reference things with Angular and NPM. If you're make, if you, you can use NPM as well. Um, but I'd rather you use a front-end manager for front-end front -end stuff, right? Um, you can also browse for additional modules. Notice how there's other ones, like Angular, um, if you wanted to do just manually. I asked you for Angular root.min.js and Angular resource. Those are the two that, that uh, you should uh, uh, download, so you can grab those remotely as well. Plus the map files. Make sure you get the map files as well. So you can browse for these. This is in one uh, long list of stuff, right? So that's the other way. And you can do this manually and drag and drop these files into your public lib and then call it what it is, Bootstrap or Angular or jQuery, to organize your files manually that way. Okay? That's the other way. Same thing with Font Awesome. One thing I didn't say is Font Awesome, so it'll be the same Font Awesome. Right? You can you know, go down here and download uh, your stuff for Font Awesome. Click Download, and you can download your toolkit for Font Awesome and put it inside of a public lib Font Awesome folder, and then you can reference it that way. All right? If you can't use, um, again, Bower for any means. But Bower, as you can see, is pretty handy, right? If you did it properly, it's clickety-click and everything's there. You don't have to go to all these websites manually to do that. So let's show you the, the way I would have it. So now that I have everything, I'm assuming if whether you get Bower, use Bower, or whether you do it manually, you still got to do what I'm going to do now. So let's get that done. All right, so I said in my uh, uh, couple files, in my bootstrap file, my bootstrap my boot.ejs file, which is right here, I want you to put in all the stuff for Bootstrap, right? So I'm going to go to my footer, and I'm going to grab this stuff in for Bootstrap, right? And cut it out. So I want all this stuff out of here. And save, and go into my boot.ejs, and paste. Now, notice that it has uh, CDN uh, versions of Bootstrap. I told you I don't want those. And by the way, notice how also I'm getting plain text here because it's EGS. I can just click here in Visual Studio Code and go up to HTML and make it an HTML file. So I get some HTML code hinting in here because, you know, I don't want to do this by hand, right? And I want to realign these, the jQuery file and the Bootstrap file so it's local. And I know that they're inside my public lib bootstrap dist CSS or JS for, uh, for JavaScript, right? Bootstrap.men. So that's what I have to do here. So I'm going to go, instead of public lib, because I know public is in my root because it's inside my app.js. It's been added to the path. I don't have to put my public folder in there at all. Right? So that's the first thing. So I'm going to go lib, right? 
forward slash uh, dist, uh, sorry, uh, bootstrap, and then dist, and then JS. That's, the, that's what has to happen there for, for a bootstrap, right? And I put it in the wrong place, of course. Let's just copy this piece in here. Because that would be bad if I put that in for jQuery. And then for jQuery, right, I'd have to put in the same thing, lib, instead of bootstrap, it'd be jQuery. Now jQuery, I don't think, has a disk. Let's see, uh, for, for jQuery. It goes jQuery, oh, it does have a disk, disk, and then, and then right into, uh, there's no JS, though, because it's all JS, right? So it would have to be one of those, jQuery 2.1.4, right? And that's if, like, all you need for jQuery and bootstrap uh, for that one, yeah. Sorry? The 214 is no good, yeah, because that would be uh, specifying a version in my jQuery it just says uh, .min.js. That's correct, right? Um, and now if I go into, so this is what I'm going to put my boot.ejs is going to just have these two. Let's hit fix my header now because, and I'll go to my uh, nglib later, right? So in my header, I've got these uh, references to stuff. I'm going to redo this from plain text into HTML. There we go. And we'll do the same thing here. That's kind of long, so I'll kind of reduce this over here. And I know the pathing because it's, uh, instead of bootstrap 335, it's not that at all. It is lib dist, sorry, bootstrap. I'll be okay. Uh, instead of this 335, it's dist, right? CSS bootstrap.min. <coughs> and the same thing goes with up there. Actually, I just copied this whole line. That's just far easier. And go to uh, uh, dash theme dot min dot js, and for font awesome, uh, it's slightly different. It's just font awesome dot css. Let's make sure that I'm correct because I don't want to have a problem, right? So I go to uh, uh, back up to here, so it looks like referencing to font awesome, and then css, right? Font awesome css. So back here, grab all this, lib font awesome. Get rid of this link, CSS, font awesome min.css, right? That's cool. This one stays the same, style sheets, because that's already in its own. Notice how this has a forward slash, and that gets me to think that I probably need a, a forward slash in front of my lib, right? So let's put that in, right? Because style sheets has it, and it's inside my public folder. Lib should have it, and that means I have to correct my other files. So I go back here, and I'm going to go to my uh, boot and put in a forward slash in front of my lib, right? That's what I'm thinking. Let's see if that works. My footer is just this, right? I got my boot. Now I need to add my ng stuff, and I know it's going to be in this format, so I might as well, might as well take this and this and copy it into my ng lib here. And I'm going to call this, uh, we're going to call this uh, <clears throat> Angular Libraries. And let's switch this from plain text into um, uh, into HTML. So we get some code hinting in there. So instead of lib.jQuery, it's going to be lib.angular. Uh -huh. Angular. And I know that. Uh, but then uh, if I go Angular, it's going to be Angular and then Angular angular.min.js. Right? So there's no dist for this one. And again, whether you download it and do it yourself or you still have to uh, put something in there. So Angular, I want Angular. I want an Angular root and I want Angular resource because I'm going to need this today. So Angular, so this would be Angular dash root and then dash root. And this would be Angular dash resource. <coughs> and then Angular dash resource. Okay, and then, you know what, in here, I'm also going to put in a reference to a file I don't have, right, because I need some kind of control module, and I'm going to reference that with app.js, right? So when I go in here, I'm going to say, these are my um, <clears throat> application, uh, I didn't ask you to do this, but I'm doing it now since we're doing it, right? Uh, these are my application scripts, right? Specific for my application, nothing to do with Angular, right? And uh, I can put in the same thing, so I'll say script, and I'll put in a source for that script, which I'll make it so that it's inside my uh, public folder. So it's just going to be called app.js. So I don't need to go into a folder for that one. I don't have that yet. Might as well add it. 
So I'm going to go into my app. In my public folder, right? In your public folder, add in a new file as a placeholder. We're going to add in called app.js, which we're going to change to ts later on. Right? All right, let's go back to that uh, uh, nglib.ejs. We got this piece, right? So Angular libraries, my application scripts are there, but they're only going to be in place for my Angular stuff, not for my entire application. If I try and make it for my entire application, I'm in trouble, guys, right? Because I'm going to load extra information that I don't need, right? Okay. And by the way, one of the, the reason why I made you do this is because from an exercise perspective, you should understand, right? Um, you should understand how to reroute and, and, and kind of rejig your whole thing, right? Okay, for now, what I want you to do is in the views folder, I want you to create a, uh, actually, let's go and fix the views. <laughs> so we know that in my register, uh, we'll start with register. Register, I have my header is okay because I'm having my, my CSS and stuff uh, included in there. But my footer is not okay anymore, right? Why? Because it, my footer is just uh, the bottom part of, my, uh, part of my footer, which is just the uh, closing HTML tag and the body tag, right? So I need to add something before there. <clears throat> this is stuff I didn't ask you to do because it's been too much work for you to do on your own in this little exercise space. space. Uh, we need something called boot.ejs, right? That's our new boot, uh, uh, thing for bootstrap. So I know that this is what I need, so I might as well just copy this line and go through my login, put it there for bootstrap, a little bit of reworking. But well, we need to do that so that way we have more flexibility for our, our app. My index. Uh, my area I don't have to ch touch. In users, I have to do it, but I have to be very careful because users has a different pathing for my footer, right? So I'm going to kind of put in there, notice how I have to go up uh, uh, one step for this one. For my boot. Now I'll copy this one and do it for my edit. <coughs> And my ad. Here's what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to test my Angular yet. I want to test my app so that I've done all these changes, that it works like normal. That's the first thing I'm going to check. We do micro steps. We, we use an iterative process of testing. I make a change, I test my changes. Then I add. I don't do everything I want. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm like, what happened? How come my changes are all, they all mess me up, right? All right, so now that I've changed all my views, right, that I need, and my partials. I didn't include nglib anywhere yet, but I will, right? Let's test out my application. So I'm going to go back to terminal, right? After I've installed all my, my modules and everything else, I should be able to do something like this without an error, right? And I haven't changed anything on the back end, just the front end stuff, EJS files, and also my dependencies, right? And let's go back into my uh, folder here, right? the files that I'm using here, and refresh. And let's see, hopefully we get everything. Yeah, see, this is good, because now we're getting back uh, the CSS files. Let's look at my terminal and see what it gives me. Notice how it goes lib bootstrap disk js bootstrap.min.js, which means it's pointing to the right folder, right? If it wasn't pointing to the right folder, I wouldn't get any of my CSS working. Now I know it's working because that's what it's returning here in my in my view, right? I can tell. I'm getting back feedback from my, from my, uh, from my console telling me I'm good. Right? So I don't have to do it. I, I, I'm good. I'm, I'm happy with this change. I'm going to push it to GitHub now. So I'm going to go back here. I got 11 changes. I'm going to click this, add them all, go to GitHub and say <clears throat> um, updated uh, partials, EJS partials to reference uh, new libraries. Okay, and then I'm going to click this here and push. And now you should have all my changes up on GitHub. So if you miss something, you can always go there and check out the stuff that I have on GitHub. You can follow along that way. Wow, lots of prep for, for us to get ready. But we need to do this stuff because we can't do any of this. We can't start doing Angular until we have a, our own little view to do it with, right? So to skip this, <coughs> moving forward, let's go back into here. Yes. You have to go up up a step. So notice how inside my 
if I, if I go into my users and if I go to index.ejs, I have to go up a step like this. Oh, um, no, that'll still work because slash lib is inside your public folder. Huh? Hey, so that's how I'm that's how I'm working right now. Yeah, I've done it already. Look, if I if, it, oh, if I oh, you mean for my user view? Oh, okay, okay. Let's see. Let's see if that works. You're correct. So I'm logging in, right? And I have to log in to get to get that view first. Yeah. That would be a problem, wouldn't it? <clears throat> Because it would have a problem. See? And if I go in here into NodeMon, you can see that it's going to um, style.css, no problem. It's going into lib, bootstrap, disk, and all the stuff for, for the JavaScript. And even for my font awesome CSS, it's going through all that. What's that? Sure. Sure. So, so let's add uh, Thor at uh, marvel.com. And we'll make his username Thor, and his password is one, two, three, four, five, six, and display name is Thor. Let's make sure his username is lower, lowercase Thor. <clears throat> Submit. <laughs> Download my version from GitHub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm so, I'm so sorry that you get that 404 error, but the way to do it is just make sure your mine looks like yours. And it should. Okay, I'll come around later during a break and see, see what the problem is. Huh? You want a break? If I don't, if I don't, if I don't, if I don't tunnel through, you guys won't, won't get angular. If you want to take a break, five minutes, I'll keep recording. Go, go, go. If you need to take a break, smoke, whatever, go. No, no, because I, I want to download your stuff. I got errors on mine. Download my stuff, and then I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll rifle through, right? If you need, get, if guys, if you need to take a break, this session is packed. Like I said, this is like my last potential last teaching session. I might have to. Looks like I might have to go and do more next week, but only because I want to help you. Um, so uh, in here, what I want to do is now that I know that this is all working and it's working fine, and I've uploaded everything, I need to add a view that we can play with, right? For now, and now I know I'm going to make a to dos list, right? A to dos list, and I know I want to add another view, right? And I have to get there somehow, right? So I need a route. For my view, because I don't have a route, can't get to it, right? So the first thing I need to do. So one, uh, I need to get there somehow, and I need to have some kind of receiving, uh, uh, some kind of receiver for my view. So how do I do that? So right click, I'm gonna add a new view in views. For now, I'm gonna leave it in the main folder. We can reroute it later because we can rejig it, right? And I'm just gonna call this to dos, um, maybe a to do list to do list.ejs and we'll make it all lowercase to do list.ejs my to do list.ejs is going to use my header right so i'm going to include my header and my footer and again to get that information i can look at one of these files like login and i'll get my uh, of this one put it in here and i'll do the same thing i'll get my uh, boot and footer right put it into my to do list i have to have that Right, and I also need the new one, right? Which is after Bootstrap and before my footer, I'm going to put in my new one, which is going to be my ng lib, right? So instead of boot.ejs, you're going to go to ng lib.ejs because that's a partial, right? The new partial that I've kind of put together, right? Ng lib, which is just this stuff here, right? Okay, we need to get there, even though I have a view, right? Who cares? Um, I need to get to this to-do list somehow. How do you recommend we get to it? If I want to go type to-do list, and forget about logging in for a second. I want to get to to-do list. How do I get to to-do list? How do I add that route in? Where do I add it in? Hmm? Routes. Right? Let's go into my uh, routes. Now I have a users and index. For now, let's add a link to my to-do list inside my index.js. Hear me now, because there's a different. It's going to be a different link than the routes to dos.js. That's a different thing we're going to put in there, right? The to dos.js file is going to house our links, so that it, it you know it sends up uh, JSON data, not routing data. Okay, routing data is what we've been used to. This stuff here, right? So if I go back to the bottom, 
and if I notice that there's a process logout request or whatever, I'm not going to put it, I'm not going to make it look like this. It's got to look something like a render page, like a get page, like this. So I'm going to kind of copy this, maybe the registration view or some other simpler view. And I'm going to go down to the bottom before my module.exports and put it in there. Okay. And notice how it says register. Well, it's not going to be register. I'm going to put in a to-do list. Right? So if I put in to-do list like that, then it'll take me to to-do list, right? Well, how does it do that? It says res render to-do list is what it's going to say, right? To-do list. And let's, uh, you know, kind of put in something like uh, to-dos as a title, right? Um, I'm not going to put in a, in a flash message because there's not going to be any ish, errors in here. But I am going to uh, request a display name. And it says, if user's there, then cool. Otherwise, redirect back to, um, back to my, my, my uh, main file. And that, that means is if you're not logged in, you can't see the to-do list uh, you know, page at all. That's what it's doing, right? If I don't have this, display name means I can't get to it. It's going to reroute me, right? Just like it would if uh, I was trying to, to log into a specific page, right? Okay, so that's, that's the one thing I need to do. And notice that there is no uh, other pathing necessary right at this point, right? But I don't have my page. My page is pretty darn empty, right? So if I go back to, uh, if I save this one, and I go back to my to-do list.ejs, I need to put something in here to kind of let them know, everyone know that we're here, right? So let's put in some kind of information. So we'll make an h1 tag for now. Uh, sorry, let's go back from plain text into HTML. And we'll go in there and we'll say to-do list. Right? And if everything goes well, if I go to my to-do list um, and everything else, I should be fine. So by now, NodeMon should have restarted, which it did, right? Because I've rejigged my, uh, uh, my server.js and, and uh, sorry, my app.js file. And if I go back to here and refresh, it should ask me to log in again, right? Because it kicks me out every time I restart my server, right? So right here, and then one, two, three, and log in. I put, didn't put the correct password in. Good. Now, I don't have a link to to-do list yet, right? I have a, it takes me to users, that's fine, but I don't have a link, so I have to put it in manually. How would it look? It's got to be like this, right? It's got to be to-do list, like lowercase, right? And if, and if you know, if it's good, if it exists, it's going to take me into that, into that link, right? So if I go to-do list by itself, to-do list, right? And enter, right? It should take me there. How come it doesn't take me there? What's the other thing? Am I missing anything else, right? That you guys can see that I'm missing? Because I've got to go there somehow. I've got to go into to do's list and everything else. Let's see what I get on my node mod, right? Because this is important to see what I get here, right? So it says uh, <clears throat> to do list gives me a 200, right? Which means where it's found. It starts loading stuff in. It starts loading lib.bootstrap.dist, my min, all this stuff in here. It starts loading my style sheet. It starts loading jQuery. It starts loading, uh, what should we call it? Uh, <clears throat> my bootstrap, and then what it wants to load is all my map files, right? But I start getting into the other piece, and the other stuff isn't loading. Look, it just stops here. So I went to here, and this is my, you know, uh, my trace, right? And then it says to-do list is a 302, right? So first it found to-do list as a 302. What's a 302? Here's login as a 302, right? Here's my get users. Get my get is good, but look how get doesn't have something in front of it. Get my, and it says get users. It doesn't do that. And here I get a problem. Right? It doesn't do anything. It doesn't render anything. So because it's not rendering anything, right, it's kicking me out. How come? Let's go back to my pathing. That's an important thing to look at. So if I go back to my routing, which is in my index, notice how over here when I do my, my, my main page, I just render it and I check for it, but I don't route myself back. Right? So I I check to see if it's there. Here, I actually check to see um, if, my, if, my, if my user, if not user, right, if I don't have a user, uh, then I have a problem. And somehow, it's not seeing my user. So to come around that, let's just take this piece up for now to test it without. Because right, I'm doing troubleshooting here. I'm trying to figure out 
what's the problem, right? So, because uh, it should go there, because to-do list, if I put this in to-do list, then I should be able to get my to-do list, which is in my partials, and, sorry, my views, to-do list. There it is, right here, right? So that's the first thing. And I'm not getting, I'm not even rendering it at all. This is the rendering piece, the get, right? And it's not my uh, registration page, it's my to-do my to-do list page, right? If I can't get to my to-do list, I can't do any Angular, right? So this is the first piece. And again, I'm going to keep, keep paring this down until all I have is my title going in there, right? Yeah. If my request user doesn't exist, then then reroute to back to my. So somehow it didn't pick it up. No, it says if it, if it doesn't exist, it says that. If it doesn't exist, yeah, that's bad. That would be bad. That's why it didn't work, right? Because I had my. It was the wrong thing. I should have put if if exists, then render the to do list, right? Otherwise, reroute me back. So let's just do it this way, and I'm, that's why I'm, I'm just paring it down because I I copied and pasted a random uh, get, right? So I'm trying, just trying to show you how it works. Okay, so now that I've done that, it's restarted. If I go back up here. And refresh, I gotta log in again, right? Because I'm not logged in, right? So I go, you know, da da da. And then log in, takes me to this page. I don't have a link yet. And I'm gonna go in here and go um, <clears throat> uh, to do list. Good, right? We're in, we have my to do list now. Now let's take a look and see what I see in my terminal. Okay, so I've got my, my bootstrap, my font awesome, my style sheets. Now again, some jQuery, some bootstrap again. I loaded my bootstrap files. And then I've got my Angular, my Angular route, and my Angular resource, and my app.js, which is the one that's going to control everything. This is good. It means I'm loading my files up properly. I'm loading up my files. So physically now, I have a, a front end that I can use all my Angular training, which is all the stuff we did in code school. I have a place where it can go now, right? So what's the first thing? Uh, when we add in a, uh, uh, I want to bootstrap, if you will, I want to bootstrap my Angular. I haven't done that, and I got to do that in my app.js file. How do I bootstrap my Angular so that it's manual bootstrapping, not the one you saw in Code School? Remember we did it last week? Do you guys remember? Probably not. So let's do this manually again together. All right? I need to manually bootstrap. Why? Because if I include ng app at, in my header, that means I have to. Go, I, there's two ways I can do it. I can do that automatic bootstrapping and add another head file, head EJS partial, that only does, all it does is det decide which one to put in, right, which would be bad, right, and lots of complication involved with that. Or I can go into uh, my, uh, my, my app.js, which is just created here inside my public, fo uh, public folder. Let's close up my server for now. In my public folder, this is the first time we're actually declaring my... Um, my Angular module and, and everything to do with Angular, right? So let's start typing. So we're going to say uh, var um, my uh, main module name, right? So my main module name, right, is equal to app. Let's call it app, right? That's the first thing we want to do it. And I'm not getting any code hinting, right? Because I'm not using TypeScript. So now i got to think about it. Do I want to use TypeScript to help me with Angular? And the answer is absolutely, because I'm going to get some code hinting that I can't. I haven't got code hinting up to now, which kind of sucks. So that means I need some extra stuff to, in my module. And I'll, I'll upload GitHub with this stuff so you have it all. So I'm going to go in here on the root, right? New file, which I've got a, a TS config file. We did this piece before, where I'm going to press control space. How about, this, how about TS config.json? How about that? tsconfig.json file, right? I'm going to do control space to add in my um, uh, my compiler options for TypeScript. I'm going to go in here and add a map, all my map files. I want to add all them in, right? So I'm going to go source maps is equal to true, right? This is all review from like a couple weeks now. We've been doing this every week, right, with, with TypeScript. So now that I've added my, um, my tsconfig file, I need to add a task runner. Remember we did this whole task runner stuff? And there's some tricks to do with Windows to make it work because especially on the local computers in front of you, you can also do it on the command line. You have to have TSC, which is TypeScript, available in the command line for all this to work, right? And again, you can follow the other videos we did to get that done. But let's go in here and go right click, uh, sorry, uh, shift, um, shift control B or on the Mac, shift command B to kind of kick off our little task runner, right? So we're going to add a task runner. I don't need any of this stuff, right? 
and kill this. And I don't need any of this stuff underneath here. I can kill all that. And, and again, for people who are watching because they don't have this stuff available to them, give me a second and I'll upload everything to GitHub. Right, so I'm just preparing a stuff for, um, you know, for TypeScript so we can get some code hinting. And I'm going to get rid of all this because we don't want a hello world. We want to just get the regular stuff. I've got my task runner working. Good. Cool. Um, let us check it out with my... I'm only going to put it on my app.js file that we're using, which is within my public file. With this app.js, I'm going to make another... I'm going to rename it to app.ts, right? And I'm going to just, um, in order for us to use Angular and have some code hinting, I need to add in my, uh, my uh, typings, right? So let's add them in. So I'm going to stop running this one. I'm going to go, uh, remember I'm going to use TSD for typing. So I'm going to say TSD install Angular finds my safe. So that way my typings are there for my type definition library so we can get code hinting. I'll do the same thing for um, angular-route minus my six. We're going to need that for routing, angular routing. And same thing with angular resource. So I can get angular resources, uh, hit code hinting as well. It's all that in there. Um, I don't need it, but maybe I will in the future. Um, I can add in all my stuff for Express if I wanted to, uh, to, Angular, to uh, TypeScript my Express. I'm not going to do it this, in this stage because all I want is code hinting for Angular right now. If I went to Express and Node, we'd just be here for another two or three hours, right, until I get everything running. Okay, so uh, for now we're good. We've got all the, all the piece parts we need. One more thing just in case is I may want to add things for Bootstrap if I wanted to add in some, uh, you know, a custom code for Bootstrap. I don't need it, but I'm putting it in there anyway. Oh. TSD install. How about install would be good, Tom. And the same thing goes with jQuery by itself. TSD install jQuery. Although I don't need it, right? Just putting it in there. Okay, cool. So I've got all my all my type definition libraries. Uh, one thing that I always like to do is inside my public, I want to reference my um, to have one reference file on the top to make sure it all works, right? I'm going to right click and add a new file in here called underscore reference. Dot .ts. And my reference.ts file is going to reference my typings, my tsd.d.ts file, this one, right? Which is inside typings, which I've got to go, because I'm in my reference, I've got to go up one to the root and down into typings and then down into tsd.d.ts. That's the root. <coughs> Don't worry, I'll send this up to GitHub for people who are watching. So i got to do that. So inside my, my, my uh, reference.ts, I'm going to say three forward slashes reference path equals to, and the path of my reference. I'm going to go up one, right, down into typings, right, and then down into tsd.d.ts, and then close that path off. So that's the actual reference path. And why am I doing that? Because then I only need one reference path in the top of my Angular file, and I don't have to worry about my typings. I can, I can make sure that they're there, right? Now, inside my app.ts file, which is up here, before I do any Angular stuff, in the top, I'm going to say, I'm going to reference my typing. So I'm going to say reference path is equal to, and now it's just simple. It's underscore reference dot TS. I'm good. All right. So now I've got my references for all my modules, right? And if you notice, if I, if, uh, for, to know that TypeScript is working, I see that I get a, inf, uh, a kind of a type inference here that says that main module is, it must be a string. Right, because as I, if I hover over, it's good. So I'm getting code, code hinting for JavaScript. Now let's see if I can get code hinting for uh, Angular. And the first thing, before I do anything, I'm just going to transpile for a second, right? Just so that it converts all my files, my TypeScript, my references. It converts my, um, my app.ts to app.js, which I will show you in another window, just so you can see the differences. There's app.js, app.ts. And now I can start typing my Angular stuff. So I'm going to say var. Angular, or app, is equal to Angular. There is my there's my type my code hinting, Angular dot, right, module, right, and I'm gonna name my module, right, and it's gonna be the name of my module, which is main module name, right, main module name, 
comma, and then I don't have any, any uh, dependencies right now, so that's all I would need. If I kind of transpile now, you can see that the JavaScript side just takes on almost the exact same stuff. I'll transpile. Uh, Command Shift B on the Mac. Control Shift B on Windows, and you have to set up your task runner. So I've done a lot. Let's go into GitHub and add all these changes. I made 17 changes to GitHub, but wait, do I need to make? Do, do I want to put my typings right up on GitHub? Do I want to do that? <clears throat> well, if I go back to my file, I go back to my gitignore file. I may want to add typings as something that I don't want in here. So typings. So that means you'd have to do a TSD install to download my files now, right? That's the, the thing with it. So I'm going to add typings in there. So it reduces the, the number of changes. And then I'm going to say <clears throat> added TypeScript support. And then I'll push all that up. So you should have all those changes with a task runner and everything up, up there. <laughs> the only thing you want to have is my uh, typings, which you can you can just run on the command line TSD space install, and it'll install all the all the typings for you. So instead of me doing it manually. Okay, cool. So I've got this stuff working. Let's go into uh, this piece here, and I want to go back into my uh, app.ts file. This is the first piece that I need for my Angular uh, uh, manual bootstrapping. What's the next piece I need? Does anyone remember? It's right from last week's lesson. You guys can go to last week's lesson if you want. Pull it up. So, as I pull this up with this step here, just make sure I don't miss step here. I'm going to add in um, an Angular. I'm going to kind of call Angular element, right? So I'm going to say <coughs> Angular dot element, right? I'm going, to, I'm going to look at the document, right? I'm going to wait for the document to be ready. That's what this is basically saying. And then what I want to do is I want to use an anonymous function, right? That inside my anonymous function, I want to write that bootstrapping module. So this, what this piece here is, it says, and this is the Angular way of doing it. It says, wait for the document to be ready. Wait until the document until the document loads. That's what it does. So I'm waiting for the document to load. And you could also use regular jQuery, jQuery, so dollar sign, document.ready, and then a function, right? It's the same thing. I'm just using the Angular version, right? So once it loads, then you want to use your um, next command, which is angular.bootstrap. Remember this one? And you want to call uh, what, what element you're going to bootstrap to, which is the whole document, <laughs> and then the name of your module in square brackets, so main module name. That, my friends, is all you need to bootstrap Angular manually. So this is manually bootstrapping. So, so I'll say here, so instead of putting ng app like we did in code school, this is the way we do it here because our app is tied into an express backend and we don't want to use, we don't want to bootstrap every one of them as an app, right? Every one, every page. So there's two pieces to it. One, we've separated the JavaScript libraries and so instead of separate nglib.ejs files so that they're not loaded up only for Angular files. And at the same time, we're only going to bootstrap this, the, the files that load that file up with my app.js. So when it loads app.js, it bootstraps onto the, uh, it adds it onto the, uh, to that particular um, uh, view. All right, so this is manual bootstrapping, manual, manually bootstrap uh, Angular. Okay, so that's, that's two pieces right there, right? And to test that out, right, um, I'm going to kind of, I'm going to transpile uh, just to make sure that those changes were in effect. I'm going to go back to um, and save. I'm going to go back to my little view, which is uh, my uh, to-do list, my to-do list dot uh, ejs file, which is right somewhere down here. There it is. And inside my to-do list, let's put it inside uh, to, to test Angular. I want to put in some kind of expression, right? If the expression works, we know that Angular has been installed. <coughs> so my expression would be something like you know, you know, Tom is right, and then plus, do some concatenation, right, getting a little tired, <laughs> tired of talking, T 
tired of talking, right? Right, so that's kind of what I want to I want to print out, and I want to put that. I want to encapsulate all that in a paragraph tag. So let's just use that. And kind of put all this in the paragraph tag. I think it's option up. Yeah, there it is. Okay, uh, so that's what's going to go in my paragraph tag. Tom is getting a little tired of talking. If Angular works, and you know what? I might as well use some Bootstrap stuff. So I'm going to say, uh, here's my a div tag with a container uh, class. Then I'm going to put in this stuff inside. So I'm going to take all this, highlight it, and then use uh, Option or Alt on the uh, hold Alt down or Option on the Mac, and just kind of move it up. Right, move that whole block in there. And then I'm going to I'm going to uh, right click and just format my code so it's nicely aligned. Right. And what I want to do now is transpile one more time to make sure that it's all good. I'm going to go back into my terminal here and run NodeMon. Right. <coughs> go back into here and refresh, and it should take me back to this. Right? Tom is getting a little tired of talking. The only way I can get Tom's little tired of talking is if I've manually bootstrapped my Angular in the first place. Unless I attach Angular to it, I don't have a controller yet, but unless I attach Angular to it, I can't write an expression. Right? So this is the first test that I have to make sure that my Angular is working. Okay? Questions so far? Anyone have other issues here when it comes to this? Yes, Amanda. This? Or do you want to? Oh, my TS config. It should be up on uh, GitHub now. Anyone else have any questions? What did I do here? So this, remember the double mas mustache? All right, welcome. Um, double mustache is an expression, an expression for Angular, right? It's an expression. <laughs> it's an expression for Angular, right? Uh, mustache. Uh, so that's what this does. If you don't have, if this, if, you know, if Angular wasn't bootstrapped or added on to my uh, my view, my to-do list.ejs, this wouldn't work. I would just get this back, right? And to note this, if you want to check this out um, to see how this, what I'm what I'm talking about is, if I go to my app.js, which is the one I was working in, inside of my public folder. So here's my app.ts file, and to, to not bootstrap it, I just have to, you know, kind of. Um, I'm just going to kind of uh, um, comment it out, right? Commenting it out, and then re. Uh, I'm kind of uh, uh, transpiling again. Notice how my server restarted, but when I go back to here and refresh, right, I see that Tom is getting a little tired, but I see the mustaches. This tells you, this is a proof that Bootstrap is, is or Angular has not been bootstrapped onto my app, right? So if it's not bootstrapped, if it's not added on, I, my expressions don't function. <coughs> So if you ever get this when you're writing uh, Angular stuff, you know something's not right. Your Angular's not connected. That's the first thing. The other thing to look at a lot is if I right-click, in, I can look at my uh, my console here because this is all front-end stuff. So if I get a console error, I would be getting console errors with this view because this is not a back-end view. The back-end view is when you do a console.log, it goes into your console, like your actual uh, terminal window here. If I do a console log for my back-end view <coughs> on my server with using Express, but when I do console logs on the front end, it'll go here inside my uh, browser because it's a, it's, it's a front end. It has nothing to do with the back end, right? And an example of that would be if I go back here um, and I put this back, and I can say something like after this, right? Uh, some kind of some kind of console.log, you know, Angular added to app, right? Or Angular app initialize. Right? See how TypeScript is helping me even with my console.log. Caught that little error. I'm just a TypeScript guy though, so don't, don't just ignore me. Um, let's go back here and refresh, and you can see that I get my to-do list is fixed, but I get or my my title for it is fixed, but my Angular added to app is added in in the console that I would normally hit it, think about getting, just like I have any other HTML file, right? So we're back to that like where we were last week. Right? That's just one piece. Now, let's add in a controller because I know I want to have some my to-dos, right? And my to-dos, first of all, in order for me to have a to-do list, there's some stuff I need to prepare, right? I need a schema for my to-do list. All that stuff that we did last time when it, when it, come, when it comes to my user, I need to do all again for my to-do list because I'm, I'm going to use Mongo to hold my to-do list in place, right? I'm trying to help you, by the way, with assignment three. I'm just prepping you for assignment three, which you do next week, right? So how do we do that? 
Let's go back here. In my server, I have index.js and a user.js. This is okay, but in my I need another model. My new model has got to be todos.js, something like that, right? And my model um, is gonna, it's going to be a new uh, new schema that I'm going to be using with Mongoose. Back to that, right? So let's add a new file in my models that I'm going to call just todo.js. So I've got my todo model and I got my user model, right? I got to put the same kind of stuff in there that we had before. So I'm going to say var mongoose, right? Just like we did before, because it's still a mongoose mo uh, module. This is back to node again. Is require mongoose. I need to have that in there. I also have to have a schema. Remember, we did a schema. We said schema is equal to uh, mongoose dot schema. I'm not getting any code hinting here, because um, I don't have node installed in or express as part of my TypeScript. I'm not, ask, I'm not asking for TypeScript to do code engine for me for this one. And notice I've, I've created a JS file, not a TS file. TS for TypeScript, JS for JavaScript. I'm not doing that here. I'm just making a regular JavaScript file again. Var, and we're going to say uh, my to-do schema then, right, is equal to a new schema, right, which is going to, um, I'm going to pass in my um, object with the other thing in the bottom of my object is I need to pass in something else of a new collection. So I'm going to say my collection, just at the bottom here, is actually equal to to-dos. That's my new collection, right? Because my collection can't be the same as before, otherwise I would have a problem, right? And I'm also going to do, just before I, I start typing the other stuff in, my module.exports has got to be in there to say, well, it's equal to mongoose, right, dot model. And in there I'm going to pass in my to-do, that's what it's going to be called, with my to-do schema, right? So that all is normal. That's stuff that we've seen before with our user schema, right? In fact, I could have gone to my user schema and stole th those pieces and put it in. So I need some of this back, this, some of this stuff. I don't need this stuff because I'm not, I'm not logging in. So my schema here for my Mongo, um, uh, my Mongo uh, collection is going to be slightly different. So I need a name, which is going to be a string, the name for my to-do. I need some way of knowing that it's completed, so I'm going to put in completed which is going to be a boolean, right? And I need another thing. I need a username. I'm going to keep track of my username because, and, and maybe you want to. You, this is optional for you. I put a username in there because I want to know what user is logging in, right? For you, you don't have to go there. All you need, my, my schema includes a username. Your schema can only have a note, right? <laughs> and the note is going to be a, a, a string, right? And the other thing I'm going to put in here is um, when is it updated? So updated, uh, that's going to be something I want, right? And I want to put in a little uh, <clears throat> um, an object here, which is the type is going to be date, right? And my default, right, is going to be uh, date.now. That's kind of a shorthand of making it a, a little uh, object of its own. It's going to listen for a date object. So that's really my schema in a nutshell. This is my... And this is, this is for, I'm, I'm giving this to you as code that you can use for your assignment three, right? So this is uh, your to-do schema for the database. So I, I, I need that, right? I need to put all those pieces in place like I would normally put in. Otherwise, I don't have that stuff, right? So for my model, it has to be included. And notice, I, I wrote it here, but remember in our, our app.js, the one that's not part of our, um, our Angular app, this is our app.js for our express app. The express app has all this stuff, right? Did I ever put in my schema in here for anything, ever, right? No, it's inside of my other stuff, inside users or whatever, or my passport, right? Uh, that's why I put my schema. So I don't have to put it in here, right? What I will need is, if I want to have my route set up for my schema, for me to do Angular routing, I need to put that, I need to put a reference of that in here, right? So I need to put that in. I don't have that yet, but I might as well prepare. So I'm going to kind of, in my app.js, which is on my express side, my server side, right? I'm going to put that in there. So I'm going to say, uh, instead of users, I'm going to change this to uh, to-dos, right? And it's going to require server roots, which I don't have yet, uh, to-dos, right? What else do I have to put in? Let's go back, go back down here and take a look. I have my... Uh, again, my app use roots. I also have my app users, 
in my users folder, right? Um, I'm going to probably need something of a, um, a to dos folder, right, for my for my structure as well, right? For now, let's leave this alone. Let's, but, but let's come up here for a second and see what I need to put in for my my to dos. So this is under routes. I need a to dos routes. Even if I put it in as a placeholder, I need it. So I'm going to go back in here into routes. It's on the server side now, right? And we'll put in a new file called to dos. I'm not sure if it's to dos or to do. May have, huh? Yeah, I'm just wondering if I how I did it um, originally. So I don't want to uh, go too too crazy with this kind of stuff <coughs> because there's a, there's a whole pile of of extra information that I put in here, and I, I don't want to make sure I want to make sure I don't uh, I don't miss something for you guys because otherwise um, you're gonna have problems. The controllers. Make sure, yeah. <clears throat> Just organization here. To do roots. To do roots, to do services. My boot JS, I did all that. Lots of changes. Okay. So in my to do's, my, uh, my routes, this is where my routing for my to do's is going to happen, right? Now, if I was to do routing with this, and if you look at my model, um, I'll, I'll take a look at my, uh, just uh, as a quick snippet, just to make sure, because I didn't write it in, which means if I didn't write it in, I may not need this piece. I don't want to confuse you guys, because there's a lot of little moving parts uh, in this one, right? I called this thing on my auth to do, so let me just take a look at the model for a second. And in my auth to do, I have, in my server, notice I have routes, and I have a to-dos, right? In my to-do route. Now, I'm going to use a code snippet. Instead of me typing all this route in, I'm going to code snip the route in, and I'm going to give it to you, right? So what's the, the route for my to-dos? I'm going to kind of go in here and open it up with my uh, text wrangler, right? And uh, if you notice, the to-do route uses Express and Passport and my router. And what it's going to do is it's going to look into models to do.js just like we normally would do it. But here's the difference between my, my to-dos, and I'm just going to copy this and then I'll talk about it because it's a little bit small, right? Let's make sure it's the right thing. Um, notice how it has a, a, res a response that has a JSON response as opposed to a, to a URL. Because remember what I, I said, the way to do this thing, to connect Express to Angular on the front end, <laughs> is to use Express as an API, right? And to use Angular as something that's going to consume the API. Right? Angular is going to use a service to consume the Express API. And for us to do that, we have to kind of pipe out JSON. Right? So instead of me typing all this out, because I'm not going to have time to do it all, I'm just going to copy this whole piece in here. And as a code snippet, I'm going to go back into this and paste it in so you have it. And I'm going to uh, send it up to GitHub for you guys. Right? So I'm going to go back into save this, this piece. I'm going to go back into GitHub. I'm going to put this up. And I'm going to say added. Uh, to do, uh, to do route, to do's route. And that's going to send that up. And one last check that I want to make to make sure I've, I'm on on the right track, right, is I also want to check to see that my app.js is correct because if that's not correct, and this is the main one, the 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 app.js is running on the server side, all right, not that the app.js is running on the public side. And some people, uh, because they get confused on the public side, they rename app.js application.js or something else because it's confusing to them. But there are two. One that's on the server side to run the server, the Express app, and the other one that's going to run the Angular app for the to-do. You could also call it to-do.js, whatever you want, something that makes sense to you. So let's check this out. I want to see this in, in my, uh, my code snippets and text wrangler here um, just to make sure that I've got everything. So I did add a couple things. I added the root, so I needed that piece. The root has to be in there with to-dos, right? I also have to have this piece in here, this to-dos, right, root, which I don't have right now. If I don't have, there's two pieces to routing, right? One piece is the path to where the route is. The other piece is when I put to-dos in, where to go, right? So I need this piece here. I'm going to copy this piece. I'm going to my app.js, which is the app.js that's inside my, on my server side again, just to be clear. And underneath where it says uh, this piece here, where app use routes and users, I'm going to add in my to-dos. 
So now my server side stuff is done, right? I don't have to worry about my server side stuff. I need that server side routing though, or else I won't be able to give a REST API. And let's take a look at that route just one more time because I kind of showed it really quickly, but I want to explain it to you guys. So here's my to do.js routing. So I still, I still ask for Express and Passport because I want to make sure that we're logged in. I don't want you to go there without the, the, the passport, right? Here's my router, right, to check the route. And now I have this little, the same method that I used last time, this little utility function, right, to check to see if you're logged in, right? I've, I've added it in here as well, right? So I say this, if I go to my forward slash, which is my index, it's going to be my new index dot, um, um, uh, path for my route, what I want to say, so if I put to do's in there, for whatever reason, right, this to do's route is going to return uh, JSON, right? It's going to it's going to post JSON data to my console or to my to my uh, uh, to whatever application is is calling it. Right? <coughs> I, I the only way I can get it is if I'm authenticated, so I won't be able to get that data unless I'm logged in, because I still request uh, require auth, which is this little function I'm calling to check to see if I'm authenticated. And that's why I'm bringing in passport. Okay, so it's that authentication piece that I put in before. Okay, so that's the same. Here's my create to dos. Here's my read to dos. All these things. Every time you see them, every time I do anything with to dos, it responds with JSON. It does not respond. I don't redirect it to another page. I'm going to use Angular to do all that routing, right? I don't want to use this to do routing, right? It doesn't make any sense. Does anyone does anyone understand the, the the distinction between two, right? One in my other route. If I look at my users routing. With my user, what I'm actually doing is, <clears throat> just to note, right, is I'm rendering a page. Here's my rendering. I'm rendering this page. I'm not doing that with my with my Angular stuff. I'm just responding with JSON, right? And that same responding with JSON you can do with, like I said, ASP.NET, PHP, whatever, right? It can respond with a JSON front end, a REST API that Angular can consume, OK? That's the trick, yes. It just doesn't. It, when Angular calls you, you have, you'll have to use Angular routing now to get the JSON file, and you need to use a uh, a service. The service itself does the the whole thing, right? So let's let's add that piece in there. Okay, so if I go to um, um, <clears throat> my app to compare again, here's my code snippets. So I've got on the service side, I have my config. It still has DB and Passport. Nothing's changed there. My models, I put in my to do model. That's important to put in. Right, my routes I added in my to do's route, right, and I also in my my index.js uh, file. If I open that up, like it did before, on the bottom, on the bottom I added in a route to take me to my to do list. This time I called it to do list with a capital L. No, I don't care about that. I to do list with my capital L uh, instead of to do list lowercase. It's the same. It just means my link inside my view in my in my nav bar has to say to do list like this. Right? Because otherwise you can't get to it in any other way. Right? And I passed in my title and I also passed in a username because um, the username variable is I, I'm using for me to filter between two different users if I only have one big to do list. You don't need to do that. So that's this one. So I did all that stuff. That's all the stuff that we've already done. Right? I just wanted to point it out so that you see all the changes we have to make on the, on the front end, on the back end, I mean. From a views perspective, right? I have my I have a to do view, but I, I haven't done that with you. Um, I've put it actually in a to do list. That doesn't matter. All this is doing is it's encapsulating it. I would have put in in my in my uh, redirection, which I would have in my um, my index.js. This instead of to do list, I would put forward slash views. Sorry, forward slash to do's to do list for this piece for what it renders, right? So I would still look at to do list, but when I when I get to do list as a request on the on the uh, on on the browser. I would render it on another page, somewhere else, inside inside of my to-dos, right? For now, let's leave it as is, all right? So that's okay. So I've done all my back-end work. Now I got to do my code snippets from my front end. And in order for me to do that, I'm going to go into, just to really be quick so I can I can show you what it is, I'm going to go into my public view, right, into my app.ts file. And normally what I want to do is, under uh, underneath here, I can kind of ramp in all the other pieces. Here's something we didn't do. We didn't do an iffy. What's an iffy? Yeah. It's actually, that's what it's called, an iffy, right? 
And an iffy is a self-executing JavaScript part. Remember that part that we did in Angular where they said, hey, you've got to encapsulate this piece? Greg was talking about it the whole time. You have to, have to encapsulate it so that this app isn't going to collide with any other app, right? Because it has its own namespace. And we, to do that, you have to put in uh, this uh, you know, kind of style right here, where you put in a self-executing function, right? Which has an anonymous function that kicks off in the middle of it, right? And what you do is you execute, this is the whole thing, right? This is the whole iffy. But I can't do this. This piece here is where all this code lives, right? So I take all this piece, cut it out, or you can use uh, your option, whatever, and put it in here. And I'm just going to just reformat my code here. So I'm putting it inside this iffy self-executing anonymous function, right? And the reason why I want to do that is to create a namespace for my code. If you don't do that with Angular and you have multiple map modules that you call app, it's going to be confused, right? Yeah. Correct. Yeah, you need this iffy, right? Okay. I also know that I'm going to use Angular routing, and I'm also going to need Angular uh, resource. Resource is my is my factory service that I've got, and in my uh, in the PowerPoint. Um, I do have it in there, but it's also from an Angular routing perspective. I'll show you what it looks like. So first, I need a list of uh, of dependencies that I'm going to put in here for my Angular, and this is how it would work out. And then bear with me while I do this. And this is the single single page approach to doing the dependencies. Um, it, you know, eventually, what I'd like to do is break them out. So I need something called um, ng root, right, as a dependency. That's my ng or uh, Angular routing. I also need something else called ng resource. These are my dependencies, modules that are built by Angular, the Angular team, to, to kind of um, to send into my app. I need those two pieces, Angular root, Angular resource. All right? So this dependency manager, remember the dependency management system uh, uses anything in this square brackets is an annotated um, array list. Right? That's what it is. So each of these modules says, well, I need, I need a uh, an, a, angular dash route, and I also need Angular. That's what ang ng stands for. Angular dash resource. That's what it means. Okay, cool. Now that I've bootstrapped everything, uh, let me take this console.log away. Um, I need the rest, and I have it in a little code snippet. I'm going to go over it with you step by step because instead of me typing it all in, uh, it's just going to take too long. I would type it all in for you, but it's just I'd rather explain it in this particular context because remember this is an optional an optional set for your your final, and I want to give you the code anyway. Right, so in my app.ts file, I'm going to open that up into uh, um, with text wrangler, and it's all this. Right now, notice how I said old single page application style. Right, because um, you can do this. I broke it out in my real module in my own in my own work. I broke this out into several different modules: controllers, factory or services, and so on. Right, with different module names. This is the quick and dirty way to do it in all in one, right? So if I just grab all this and go all the way down, I'm not typing all this stuff, guys, right? Go all the way down to here. I'm going to copy it and I'll explain it all. And I'll go back in here and I'll just paste it in there. Okay? And then what I'll do is check for errors. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to format my code so it's formatted nicely. And let's talk about it a little bit. All right, so after I bootstrap my module, this is where I'm actually going to. Um, and I've done it twice here. Um, this is where I'm going to have my to-do service. And the, the way it looks like is this. I call an app the factory piece of my Angular. And now, because I have my, um, I know about uh, my schema, right? I call my factory, the name of my service, This when I use factory, there's different ways of, of creating my own service. One way is factory. Another way is service, right? And there's different... Uh, method names for that. Factory is most, the most commonly used name way of creating a service. When I create a service, I can consume JSON data, answering Ed's question. I can't consume, uh, or maybe it was your question, I can't consume um, JSON data unless I have a factory or some kind of service to do that, right? So I declare my service with the name of to-dos. And then I need a uh, resource as one of my dependencies. Resource comes from ng resource. That's why I've loaded ng resource in here in the first place, right? So the resource um, object is what I'm going to use, right? And what I'm saying is I'm going to return my to-do ID 
right, that I'm getting from my factory. But guess what? When I do to-do's ID, I need some routing, and my angular routing is happening down here, right? So inside my controller, I have routes, and here's my angular routing. When I look at to-do's, right, my to-do's or my to-do details, right, this is where I go and, and actually use my templates that I'm going to put into my EJS. Hey, I don't have that EJS template. Let's add it in, right? Because I have my EJS template. I made my um, to-do list template, but all I've added in is this crap, right? I got to add in some real stuff, so let's add in the front end for you, right? These are all the piece parts to add in. These are all the moving pieces for your Angular module, right? So we can get this working. Okay, so let's do that. So I'm going to go back into this, and I'm going to go back into my server roots, or views, I mean. And inside my, I just put it in here, my index.ejs, but it doesn't really matter. I'm going to open it up with uh, text wrangler again. There it is. And when I look in there, I can see there's a bunch of stuff that I'm doing. I'm not going to retype all this stuff again. Notice my partials and all that stuff has been realigned because I put in my, um, this module here was actually in another folder in my view, in my version, but in your version it's not. So I'm going to take all this stuff, copy it, I'm going to go back into here, and inside my view I'm just going to get rid of all this stuff and paste it, and then I'm going to save it. So lots of stuff. So notice that I have two templates. I have one template, and I and, and remember that the template comes across in this, in this container module with ng view. Once I see ng view, that is actually a, um, a directive that actually stores, that re-renders this view. So I'm actually creating a small single page application just for my to-do list that I can use two templates in one index.html. And that's how all Angular modules are done. All Angular uh, websites pretty much use a single page application format for their stuff. They don't use multiple pages typically, right? So one page re-renders stuff depending on the template, right? So I have two templates, todos.html, that's one template. And the other template is this other one down here, which is to do details, which I never rendered yet with you guys, right? but I'm giving it to you. Okay. I notice how it says to do notes and the checkbox and all that kind of stuff. It's all in there, right? And even the three buttons that I talked about, this, uh, you know, update, remove, and cancel, right? It's all in there for you, okay? So I've, you've got all the code. All you got to do is integrate it into your site for assignment three. That's all I'm asking, right? It's not, I don't want you to rewrite, you know, recreate the wheel here. I'm giving you a pattern. I want you to use for your assignment three, all right? Okay, cool, so let's make this pattern work before the time expires, right? Um, so um, I've got all this stuff, and if you notice, let's go back into some of this, uh, this to-do, I've created a to-do controller, so first I got my factory, and I got my routing, and my routing, what it says is, when I, I put in to-dos, just my regular to-dos, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, kind of route to to-dos, to, to my template URL is gonna be my to-dos.html, and my controller, instead of me typing in uh, inside my brackets like you do, you see, remember, we, actually they showed this in, in the um, uh, Angular Code School, right, uh, module, where the controller itself, I'm, I'm mentioning what the controller is, where we made your custom directive, your custom service, right? So I'm doing this, I'm saying my to-do controller is the controller that I'm using. In the other view, it's going to be my detail controller, my to-do detail controller. That's what it's going to be that I'm going to use, right? And I've specified these controllers right here with the inline. Right? So one of them is my to-do controller, and my to-do controller has a, uh, a few methods. My set username method, right? Um, that's one of them. There's the save method, right? And by the way, this set username method, uh, man, I, I, I don't know if I should have given you this one, but this is the one that's going to get you so that you can use the, it'll, it'll, uh, it'll filter on username, right? And in order for you to filter on username, because I've, I've given you my bastardized version, right? Sorry to do that. That means my schema is going to be a little different. So let me just fix that. So I just noticed that now, and I apologize. But my user, my to-do schema has to change just a touch. Otherwise, you're going to have an issue. And I'm just going to go here to make sure that I see it. Notice how I have a username string. I need that username string in my schema. Otherwise, when I go to my Mongo database, there won't be a username in there at all. So I'm going to go back. And it's my username schema my models, my username, I'm going to put it under completed, I'm going to, and before, or uh, under note, doesn't really matter, I'm going to put a username in there as another piece of information I need in my database. And that means when I render, in my rendering model, when I go to my uh, routing, and I apologize about this, guys, under the, under the back end, in order for me to get my user information, I need to have, send in my username as well. So, 
I got to go back over here into my index uh, in my routing into my index.js uh, file text wrangler and down at the bottom I could also send in this username information alongside with this stuff because otherwise if I don't do that then it won't route properly and you guys are going to have an error that I won't be able to fix. A worst case scenario, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just give you the, my files. I just wanted to, I wanted to build it with you, which is the time is just running out. It's not clean uh, for this kind of stuff to work. So in my index, uh, on my routing, on the bottom here, I'm going to type in that, right? So here's my username. So I'm filtering by user, right? Transpiling here, I got to do that. Um, so I've got almost all the pieces I need, right? I've got my app.ts, which is right here, right? And when I, when I transpiled, I compiled it um, across. So I got no errors right now, which is a good thing. So the first piece basically does the save function, which saves everything into the database, right? The update function updates. The edit function actually um, edits that one line. It's a custom function I made to edit the line, right? Where I do an angular copy. I got the cancel and remove. And I also look at a two new function, which is the remaining to-dos. So I can calculate how many to-dos there are remaining that I haven't, I haven't checkmarked, right? and the total to-dos based on the index that I'm getting, right? Here's my to-do detail controller, which I've never used yet. I have an instantiate. This is the one piece you're going to have to make work in your whole, out of the whole uh, uh, assignment three, which I didn't uh, kind of uh, uh, kick off yet. Not difficult to do, by the way. All right, so I've got all my piece parts. Let's see if this monster works, right? <laughs> If I haven't forgotten anything. Ooh, lots of changes. Um, and now if I go here and refresh, for to-do list, it's going to kick me back uh, to this. Notice how um, it's telling me this because it's saying there's a bad config. It's trying to get here because in my to-do list, this to-do list, I'm not logged in. Right? I should be logged in. So let's just do that. Um, I could change that in my routing. So going back to my, my, my login. Inside here, I'm going to have to log in first. And I'll fix that in a second. Okay, log in. I'm good. Notice also that at the top, I don't have a, a to-do list, um, an area to go for the to-do list. I don't have any place like that because it's one piece that I was missing. Um, inside my um, my header and my partials, right? My header to EJS doesn't have any place for me to go inside of my uh, list items, right? So. Going back to my, um, and I know I'm, I'm timing out, guys, but if I go back to my um, my list, and if I go back to my views, and if I go back to my um, header.ejs and open that up in Text Wrangler, then I'm going to copy this whole thing because it's exactly the same as the other one, I hope, and put it inside my, uh, uh, into this one, and that should fix my problems when I go back to my website. And just to do that, just to make sure, um, I'm going to go in here and transpile, which is going to relaunch my, my, my uh, website here. And when I go back here and refresh, it's going to kick me out. Yay. Almost there. And now we're going to have another problem. So I've got my to-do list, but this to-do list points to my to-do list with a capital but it does give me my to-do list, so everything works now. Okay, so I got my to-do list and everything else. I want to make a new to-do list. Let's kill this off. I want to create a new to-do, so <clears throat> next week, as an example, please remember, uh, check everyone's um, <clears throat> concept for the final project. The final project, that's what I want to do. So here's my create. So it worked. And to check that in Mongo, right, if I go check in Mongo, I can do a uh, DB to do find pretty, and there it is. So it actually did that stuff with our little website. It has it completed. It has a username. And notice that I have three out of three, right? So I'm good to go. So all the stuff you need, and I know I kind of skimmed the surface of it at the end, and I apologize, but all the stuff you need is here in Lessons. So I'm going to go back into here and definitely upload this to GitHub so you have all my code, all the code that you need to integrate into your own site, okay? And also, some good code base to look at to say, hey, how does this all work, right? Because I want to make sure you guys are successful with your final project, which to me is the most important piece, right?
So added Angular um, controllers and modules. So now you have everything you need to make this work. <coughs> Questions around this before we go? I know it's a lot. And you know what I will do is I'll go over it with you guys next week again, right, if you're confused. Remember, your assignment three, all you need to do is take this code that I've given you, right, and incorporate it nicely into your own, uh, what should we call, profile site. That's the, that's the exercise, really, all right? So if you do that, you get your 10%. Any other concerns or questions out there? Yes? Is there any way you can post the opt to the folder as well? So which one? So the one you were copying from, it was structured a little bit differently. Yes, I can do that too. I'll, I'll do that later on. Yes? Do I do what? Yes, let's talk outside. Do we have, can we do that? Anyone else? Yes, anyone else? No problem? Sure. Thanks, guys, for your patience today. <laughs> All right.